Theater presents Nancy Gates and Scott Brady. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Flight Plan, starring Nancy Gates. And now, here is your host, Scott Brady. Thank you, Tony LaFrano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Flight Plan, starring Nancy Gates as Jean. Get up. Dawn. Mm -hmm. Time to get up. Mm -hmm. Come on, up, up. Rise and shine. No, no, get out of here. Oh, come on. It's a beautiful morning. The sun's shining. The birds are singing. Dawn. Oh, boy, boy, boy. I'll pull the covers off. Get away from this bed. I'll let you have it. Will you, please? I'm not kidding. Now, you can just stop pointing your finger at me. This is a gun. Dawn. Pow. No. Oh. Don't say I didn't warn you. It's almost noon. I'll stick the dog on you. We don't have a dog. Now, come on. Mm. Out from under that blanket. Mm. Don? Mm. Don, the house is on fire. The world is coming to an end. Now, get up or you'll miss it. Don? married, it's not at all likely that you have as much trouble as I do getting your husband up in the morning. Of course, mine's a little different. You see, he works nights. Oh, not because he has to. He says it's because it's easier to think at night. Easier to let the imagination run free. And when you're a cartoonist, that can be pretty important. Don. Don, you asked me to get you up at 10.30. Don? <clears throat> A flying saucer is hovering over the street in front of the house. So, uh... So they want you to move the car so they can land. Don? Mm. Oh, it's no use. Of course, I've always thought Don's imagination was pretty good at any time of the day. Now, take how I got into this, for instance. Just how I happened to meet him. Never would have happened except for Don's imagination, and well, at least we never would have gotten married or, or even had that first date. Washington International Airport was where it all began. You see, being a hostess with Transnational Airlines, I was at the reservation desk checking the passengers on my next flight when I first saw him. There you are, Mr. Jennings. I hope you and your wife have a very nice flight. Your tickets are in this envelope, and these are your gate passes. Uh, uh, which, which gate was that? Gate five, sir. It never flown before, you know. Everybody keeps telling me there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> nothing at all, sir. Of course, I know that, but I would appreciate it if you could tell the pilot not to fly too high. My wife, you know, tends to get nervous. Doesn't bother me, <laughs> unless my wife, you know. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, gate five, you say? Yes, sir. Fifteen minutes. Thank you, my you're welcome, sir. Pardon me. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. May I help you? Uh, you are the reservation clerk? Well, I'm a stewardess, but if it's about tickets, I'm sure I can help you. A stewardess? <laughs> well, it's not, uh, not on the Denver flight, is it? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, it is. Ooh, I'm in luck. Is there something I can do for you? Uh, yes, yes, uh, you... Have a reservation for me, I believe. The name is Clifford, Don Clifford. Oh, let me see, sir. Ames, Bronson, Calder. Yes, here we are. Don Clifford, one way. That'll be $132.60. Fine, fine. How do you think this covers it? Oh? Oh, what? No, what? It's government voucher. Oh, really? I've never seen one of these before. <laughs> well, it's just as legal as a silver dollar. 
Yes, I'm sure it is. And it covers the amount right to the penny. Isn't that interesting? Uh, may I have my ticket? Oh, I'm sorry. Here you are. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Was there something else? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, tell me, has Mr. Churchill arrived yet? Churchill? I don't believe... Schball on top, carries a cane, rather portly gentleman, usually smoking a cigar. Not that, Mr. Churchill. Oh, I, I, I shouldn't have said anything. Probably traveling incognito. Now, Miss, look, I, I would appreciate it if you just forget that I said that. You mean Winston? Please, please keep your voice down. You mean Winston Churchill? No, I didn't say that, did I? In fact, we agreed to forget I said anything at all. Oh, my goodness. On my flight. Now, uh, Miss, uh, m- Miss... Coverly, Jean Coverly. Yes, Miss Coverly. Uh, now, mind you, I'm just saying that if a rather important person were traveling on your flight, and if the government was sending someone along to, uh, well, to look after him... You mean a bodyguard? Please, lower your voice. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, what were you going to say? Saying that if someone were going to look after this important person, wouldn't the best place to sit... Well, now, wouldn't that be the last seat in the plane? Oh, well, let me see. Yes, I think that would be the best place. He could see almost everything from there. Oh, that's fine, just fine. That would be right next to where the stewardess sits. Yes, sir, that's right. No, that's just fine. And, Miss Coverly, for anyone's information, Mr. Churchill will not be taking this flight. Why do you follow me? Oh, I wouldn't breathe a word of it, Mr. Clifford. Not a word. Good girl, good girl. See you later. You can depend on me. Oh, I'm sure of that. On my flight? Hey, Shirley... Hey. Oh, y- yes, sir. Uh, the girl at the information desk... Said she said you people had the next plane out of here. Yeah, that's what she said. Yes, sir, we have a plane that leaves in about seven minutes. Huh? Where to? Non-stop to Denver, sir. Good enough. Well, slip us a couple of ducats, sister. Come on, come on, come on. He means tickets, girlie. We'll take two tickets, please. One way? Yeah, yeah, one way. All right, if you gentlemen will just give me your names, please. Names? What do you need names for? Well, for the manifest. It's just routine. Okay, Arnie? Yeah, I think so. May I have your names, then, please? John, John Smith. Smith. I, uh, that is, that is, uh, uh, his name is John Smith. My name is Bill. Bill Smith. John and Bill Smith. Yeah, we're brothers is what we are. Let's see, that'll be $265.20. Here's three bills. And here are your tickets. These passes will get you through the gate. Did you want me to check that bag? Oh, No! no. That is, that is, uh, it's so light. We'll, we'll just carry it. What gate was that? Gate five. Fine. Come on, Milt. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. You forgot your change. All right, lady. Keep it. But I can't. It's against the rules. Hi, Jeannie. Was there something wrong? Oh, hi, Gail. What's going on? A couple of passengers just ran off and left me a $35 tip. Oh, great. Unless somebody finds out about it, I mean. Yeah. Well, I guess I can give it back to them on the plane. Well, I'm officially on duty now, so I guess you can go see all your passengers aboard. Have they all arrived? Not all. Three or four tickets left in the reservation box, and the flight isn't sold out. Uh Is there anything else I ought to know? No, I think... How do you like that? I almost forgot. Forgot what? The most wonderful thing. I'm really not supposed to mention this, but... Well, then I suppose I'll have to tell you, seeing that he hasn't arrived yet anyway. Huh? Well, you'll have to give him his ticket. Give who his ticket? What are you talking about? Winston Churchill. That's what I'm talking about. Winston Churchill? Shh. Keep your voice down. No one's supposed to know. Oh, Ginny, you're nuts. I have it on very good authority. Whose? Well, on the authority of... of his bodyguard, that's who. Oh, somebody's pulling your leg. It's supposed to be a top secret. All right, wait a minute. Now, before you say any more, maybe you'd better take a look at this. The newspaper? Mm Mm-hmm. Go and read what it says. Police amazed as two men hold up Washington Bank in broad daylight. The first national... No, 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 not that. Here. This. See this picture? This one? Mm Mm-hmm. See who it is? And look at the caption. 
Oh, read it. Well, it says, Mr. Churchill is being visited by friends. And it shows him at his front door in London. <laughs> Somebody's pulling your leg, honey. Well, well, if he thinks he's going to get away with it, he's got another thing coming. I was pretty busy until the plane was in the air, so I remember I didn't say anything to Don right away. In fact, I didn't say a word until takeoff was completed and the smoking sign was on. Then I spoke my mind. I suppose you think that was very funny. My pardon? Make a great story for the boys back at the barber shop. <laughs> barber shop? It's only my position, Mr. Clifford, which prevents me from telling you just exactly what I think about a trick like that. You're pretty mad, huh? Well, how'd you feel if somebody deliberately made a fool out of you? Well, I didn't do it for that reason. No, you got to believe that, really, I didn't. What possible reason could you have had? Well, there were two of them, both very good ones. You see, I wanted to make an impression on you. Well, you've done that all right. And when I first saw you, well, well I just thought that you were about the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen in my life. I wanted to sit next to you. You did? <laughs> I still do. Oh, well, I suppose when you put it that way... <laughs> and and you will admit that about the last person in the whole world who could travel incognito is Winston Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I hadn't thought of it that way. <laughs> I guess it is kind of funny, isn't it? Oh, well... <laughs> and, and come to think of it, you, you didn't really lie to me. You <laughs> just sort of led me along. <laughs> yeah. It's that way with most people. I mean, with most people who have a little imagination. Yeah, but the whole thing could have backfired. Well, I, I got pretty angry. Ah, you wouldn't have stayed angry. How do you know that? Well, because it's pretty hard to have a healthy imagination without having a pretty good sense of humor, too. Well, I never thought of that. <laughs> you know, I bet you look just wonderful in pink. What's that got to do with imagination? Well, nothing, nothing. If you don't have a pink dress, how about blue, huh? Uh, have you got anything in, say, a uh, oh, nice light blue? Yes, I have. Why? No, I wonder what kind of flowers to get you. Flowers? Well, after all, you can't have you wearing flowers that clash with your dress now. What on earth? At dinner. Dinner. Oh, but then maybe I'd, I'd, I'd better tell you where we're going so you'll have a better idea what to wear. Huh? Now, look, Mr. Now, look, it's, it's, it's just one of the nicest little places in Denver. Oh, you'll love it. Soft warm room with a great big stone fireplace. Small orchestra on the order of George Shearing, but slower, softer. Oh, will you see it? The whole place is illuminated only by candlelight. There's a little dance floor that overlooks the colored fountains playing in City Park Lake. In the winter? Uh, well, w what I meant is that a, a dance floor that overlooks the lake and the parties of ice skaters warming themselves around open fires. And oh, that food... <laughs> Prime ribs of beef that just melt in your mouth. Mm, sounds lovely. You know, maybe a white dress would be better after all. Now, Mr. Clifford, I I can't go out with you. I, I don't even know you. Oh, no problem. You will by the time we reach Denver. That's why I took this seat, so we could get acquainted. <laughs> Remember? Now, if you want a little of my background, you already know my name. I'm 29 years old. Oh, by the way, you, you, you are single, aren't you? Yes. Good, good, good. So am I. Now, if you want a work reference, right now I work for the government. Uh, 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 pardon me, I just happened to be passing by and I heard... Did you say you work for the government? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, no. Something wrong, Mr. Smith? Huh? Is there something I can do for you, sir? Oh, no. No, no, lady, nothing at all. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, pardon me, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> What do you suppose the matter with him? I don't know. Got all the way down here and turned around and went back. Maybe see. He looked white as a sheet. Maybe I'd better go see. Oh, no, no, no. Don't go. There's nothing wrong with him. I really should check. It's my job, you know. Now, look, you don't want to embarrass him. Embarrass him? Well, if he was a little upset, he's apparently over it by now. But still, I... And he certainly wouldn't appreciate you calling the other passenger's attention to his condition. I'll only be a minute. Well, you, you will come right back now. All right, I'll come right back. You promise? I promise. 
Everything all right, Mr. Jennings? Fine, fine, Joe. We're a little high. Just just fine. Fine, thank you. That's good. But I tell you, honey, he's a fat. I should have spotted him sooner. Impossible. With my own ears, I heard me. Ixnay, Ixnay. Huh? What's the matter with... Oh, hello, miss. Oh. Everything all right? I was just coming to ask you, Mr. Smith. Smith? Oh, me. You looked as if you weren't feeling too well. It was nothing. No, nothing at all. Feel great. Never felt better. Of course, but if you'd like a little water, I... No, nothing, nothing. Fine. Feel great. Well, if you're sure. He's sure. Healthy as a horse. Well, all right. <laughs> Thanks anyway, lady. Oh, would you like for me to put that bag up in the rack, Mr. Smith? No, no. no. I, I, I mean, I mean, it's fine right here. Look, lady, if we want anything, we'll call on you. Huh? All right. It's the button right there by the light. Great. Thank you. And if you have any more trouble, there's a carton under the seat. Yeah, yeah, we know. Thanks. It's all right. If you need anything, just ring. Yeah, yeah, thanks, lady. Hey, honey. Huh? You suppose she knows anything? Nah. Well, no, I don't know. She was talking to a dick. That's how I heard. You want to know what I think? Uh, I'll tell you what I think. I think you're out of your mind. I think you're losing your grip. But, honey, I heard him. I tell you, Keep I... Keep your voice down. I you? heard him say he was a government man with my own ears. But look, look, Mel. It's impossible for him to be on our trail as soon. It's just impossible, just that's all. I don't know how they figured it out so quick, but they did. You know, honey, the feds ain't like local cops. But they're not as sharp as all that. Robbing a bank. I never should have let you talk me Shut into it. let me think, will you? And then carrying the money over a state line. That's a violation of man act is what it is. Nothing of the kind. Well, some other act, then. It's a double compound felony, I'm sure of that. Well, if they got us, they got us. I ain't going to give more to work with. Uh, uh, uh. What are you doing? Uh, pushing my gun down behind the seat. You what? Uh, yeah. I mean, you're what? I've already done it. I pushed my gun down behind the seat. Why'd you do a dumb thing like that? So they won't find it on me. I ain't supposed to carry a gun. It's a violation of parole. You're out of your mind. Honey... You got me prayed, you do the same thing. Look, just sit still, will you, and shut up? I gotta figure this thing out. You can't outsmart the feds. Will you shut up? Now, let me see. Let me see. If this guy... If this guy's a fed, why hasn't he pinched us yet? Why should he? All he have to do is phone ahead and pick us up in Denver when we get off the plane. Phone? Phone? How is he gonna phone from a... You're right, Mike. You might be right. He could have sent a radio message. Huh. Huh. So they think they're going to pick us up in Denver, do they? Arnie, if they think they're going to, then they're going to. Milk, would you please let me think? I'm working on something. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm getting a plan. <laughs> Hello again. Hey, thought you said you'd be right back. Well, I had to serve lunch. It's my job. Well, if I'd known it would take so long, I'd have insisted on helping. Oh, feels so good to sit down again. Yeah, I'll bet. That, uh, take care of your duties for a while? Mm, for a while, I think. How's that fellow, what did you say his name was, uh, Smith? Oh, him? He seemed fine. In fact, he asked for seconds on the chicken, so he must have been fine. Yeah. You know something? Watching you walk up and down, you know, with the trays serving lunch, came to a decision. Decision? About what? About you. You know, a white dress would be nice. Pink dress, blue one, both would be great, but it's fine with me if you just wear that uniform when we go to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd love to have seen you when you were a little girl. Bet you really something to see. Oh, I was the funniest looking girl on the block. Nah. <laughs> really, I was. I was spindly and freckled. Oh, come on, you. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> what, pigtails? Oh, no, nothing so glamorous as pigtails. I had one of those, oh, those haircuts like, what's his name, Prince Valiant? Oh, yeah, yeah, like the little boy in the paint can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'd love to have seen that. Uh-oh. Hmm? Here comes another interruption. Oh, it's the other Mr. Smith. The other Mr. Smith? Just keep your hands where I can see him. What? Is there something I can do for you, sir? There sure is, lady. You. Me? Yeah, you. 
Under this overcoat, there's a gun. A gun? Well, what is this, Chan? Just keep your voices down, and we won't have to get the rest of the passengers mixed up in this. All right, but what is all this? On your feet, the both of you. What are you going to do? I'm taking you both to join my friend and me in the pilot's compartment, where we can keep an eye on you. Come on, let's go. The lady goes through the door first. Then you, Buster, and then me. Go ahead. Better do what he says, Gene. Now I'll close the door and we'll have it nice and cozy in here. Oh, hi, Arnie. I got them all with me. No. Hey, what'd you do with the pilot? Nothing. Nothing? What are you telling me? Nothing. He's lying all over the floor. Just did what you said. You told me if he makes a sudden move, I should clobber him. All right, so he made a sudden move. Is is he... He's not dead, but it's no thanks to this man. It looks like he'll be out for quite a while. Great, just great. Oh, I'd better get some water. You'll stay right where you are. Look, fellas, what's going on? You two thugs trying to hijack this plane? Oh, he's getting cute. As if he didn't know. And him a government man. These two robbed a bank in Washington. They seem to be under the impression that you're a G-man, so they want us to land. Or rather, now they want me to land in Kansas City. You uh, aren't by any chance a G-man, are you? <laughs> me a G-man? No, not even a little bit. Well, oh, now don't give me that. I heard you say you were with my own ears. You can't just leave the captain on the floor like that. Somebody do something, please. I'll get the first aid kit and bring him around. Just let me get out of this. Oh, See how you oh, don't milk? Don't hit him. Oh. I did hit him, you big. Come on, Marks. Honey, he made a sudden move, and you told me... He's the be... co-pilot, you idiot. Now, who's going to fly the plane? That is a very good question. We'll all be killed. Ah, lady, I wasn't taking any chances. I saw him set the plane on automatic pilot. You think I'm stupid? Well, I think you're stupid. You ruined everything. You, 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 you goof, you nincompoop. Nincompoop? Hey, fella, he shouldn't talk to you like that. Oh, you shouldn't talk to me like that, honey. Oh, all the guys I had to tie up with for a partner. This is no time for quarrel. Uh-uh, let him fight, honey, let him fight. <laughs> You've been a jinx since the day I met you. Oh, a jinx, huh? Well, you don't have to take that from him. No, I don't have to take that from you. Well, I'd like to know what you think you can do about it, you big dumb ox, you, you oaf. Go on, hit him. Go on, hit him. Hit him? He's got a gun on me. You sure it's on you? Yeah. Okay, now I'll hit him. <clears throat> hey, thanks, mister. That's all right, chum. Now, since I've got the gun, Mr. Smith, I would appreciate it if you'd put your hands behind you so the lady can tie you up, huh? Put my hand... Oh, the jig is up, huh? Afraid so. Okay, lady, start tying. I guess I'm smart enough to know you just can't beat the fence. Well, hey, you back so soon? I'm back. <laughs> How's the prisoner? Oh, tied up and strapped in his seat. And the pilot, co-pilot, they feeling any better? And he'll be all right. You really can fly a DC-3? <laughs> DC-3 is old stuff to me. Has a different name in the Air Force, but it's the same plane. Air Force? I thought you said you were a government man. I said I worked for the government. And I did. Just been discharged in the Air Force. That's why I bought my ticket with a government voucher. Now, come on, sit down. Sit down. In the co-pilot's seat, we've still got some getting acquainted to do. That is, if we're going to dinner tonight. And we did go out to dinner. And it was the first of a lot of wonderful dates. Don went back to his civilian occupation, cartooning, and a year later we were married. We've been living happily ever after. Never a crossword between us. Unless it's when I'm trying to get Don up in the morning. Don, time to get up. Mm. Don, mm. come on, time to get up. Uh, all right, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. Not till you're sitting on the edge of the bed. All right, all right. There. That make you happy? Oh, what's been going on? I've just been telling the people how we met. Oh, you mean about the USO dance? Don, I... Look, honey, go get me a cup of coffee, huh? But I... You said it was morning. I won't believe it till you bring me a cup of coffee now, scat. But I was telling about... Coffee, woman, coffee. Now, now, now. Oh, all right. 
Orange juice, too? No, honey, just coffee. <laughs> oh, that's a great girl, that. <laughs> so she told you the story about how we met, huh? Well, which one? About how I was the great white hunter in Africa and saved up in the headhunters? Or was it the one where I was the first mate of a ship that went down at sea? And out of all the passengers, she was the only one I saved. <laughs> now, it was probably that airplane one. That's her favorite. You know, you can't really blame her, though. It's more just plain storytelling than lying. You see, with me doing a comic strip for a living and Jeannie doing most of my plotting for me, her imagination kind of tends to get away from her. If she ever told you the story about how we really met, well, just would have bored the socks off you. Ah, oh, it's a great girl, though. Yeah. Looks wonderful in blue. This is Scott Brady again. If you listen to family theater often, chances are you've noticed that our stories usually have happy endings. There's a very good reason for that. You see, most drama, whether it be a radio play, a motion picture, or a television show, is designed to help you escape. It's meant to be a diversion to help you get out of your own mental surroundings and become a part of the drama. Let you, through your imagination, become one of the characters in the play or associate yourself so closely with a character that for a brief period of time you're more concerned with some dramatized problem than you are with your own real problems. If the play has a happy ending, if all the leading characters' problems are resolved, it's likely you come away feeling a little better and a little more hopeful of solving your own problems. And, of course, the reverse is usually true when a play has a sad ending. So we usually have happy ones. Plays, games, dancing, reading good books, all of these things that appeal to the play instinct in us are good when used in moderation. They help us face problems by giving us a chance to relax for a few moments, get away from it all, and therefore, in a way, recharge ourselves. The play instinct and imagination are two gifts God has given us to help us face our own problems. They are great gifts, but there is one that's a little better. Better because it works almost directly on the problem, even when it might be too big for us to handle alone. I mean prayer. Prayer is the means through which any difficulty can be faced, for through prayer we can call for divine assistance. Just by asking our maker for help, we can obtain it. That was promised by God when he said, Whatever you ask in my name will be given to you. And at another time, to those who take their problems to the heart of God, I will bestow abundant blessings on their undertakings. Divine help is available through prayer. Family theater suggests family prayer for the very good reason that it can keep one kind of problem from ever coming up in your home. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Flight Plan, starring Nancy Gates. Scott Brady was your host. Others in our cast were Tony Barrett, Paul Dubois, Lynn Allen, Addie Marr, and Jim Nusser. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by Robert Hugo Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Henry Mancini. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us next week when family theater will present... The Ninth Floor of the Plaza. Irene Dunn will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.